Breaking news. 10th National Assembly. Zoning Deputy Speaker to Southeast. Disgrace. Disgusting. Mohanes and Debo. Speaks out. Fire. Well, my wonderful people, my viewers and subscribers all over the world, greetings to you all. Good morning you know, and welcome to our new wiki broadcast. Now, me, Mo, when Mo, my name never change you. I still remember one and the only Okuta Deli Talk. Oh, uh, Amanda Nese speaking from the put Okuta Deli Talk platform. Uh, this is the Nobonga station where we speak to you the undiluted truth about Nigeria, about Biafra struggle, about the world, and about what is happening in other empire African countries. So, my my able subscribers and viewers, I just want to use this opportunity to say happy Sunday to each and every one of us out there, my family members. Make another jollificate because today is a new day and today happens to be Sunday. This one seems to be the first Sunday of the month of June. So if you are going to church, make you go there, do what? Make you pray very well. If na mosque they go, make you do jejeli and wirely, go to your mosque. If na aladora and the rest of them who and uh, if no good you the worship Amadio, generally go to your shrine and do the needful because today happens to be the first day of the month of uh, june so make we all the jo enjoy the jollificate they move ahead because without uh, 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 all these things my dear life will become meaning um, it became meaningless not meaningful so make gonna do what make gonna do worship anything go on and not say that one now they answer your prayers so my wonderful people if you never subscribe to my channel this is the right time for you to do that make sure as you listen to this news finish you share it with your brothers or your next the next door neighbor today is sunday making sure that love may that love the lead because uh the able president of the flannel government of nigeria he don't he don't use a full increment and uh, for a hike, contact do what? Contact welcome Nigerians. Say they voted for him to lead. This one, and I lead in being a tyranny. Me and Israel, I know go feel talk. But only the people of Nigeria, and them have the final say. Just like what happened 2019, you know, when uh, the uh, the past governor or the past president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, Muhammad Buhari, said that uh, he thanked Nigeria for giving him additional another additional four years. I don't know whether four year, years it's been a four years. And uh, on the first day of his assignment to continue the tyranny government we have in Nigeria, he used uh, the same full increment to do what? To say Nigerians on our way done. So that's exactly what happened in this scenario. And uh, for you to kick against this in my dear brothers, that means you don't know the trajectory of APC. That is how they start and uh, that is how they also end. Remember last year, December, we have a fuel uh, scarcity. Even people, a lot of people could not travel because of the price. Of transportation going to their normal village where they're supposed to pay 1,000 or 2,000, they will be paying a whooping sum of 20,000 naira. A petty business trader who wants to go back home, tell me if you pay 20,000 naira for transport, then how much are you going to spend to your families back home? The same thing, you know, ending to their tenure is fair scarcity and naira design, which put Nigerians into abject poverty to death. And that issue of naira design has not been addressed till today. They spend over 5 billion naira to redesign naira. Then in the market now or in the public domain, you cannot find that a redesign or new printed naira. They have sent that naira to their homes, waiting for another four years, 2027, to use it to buy boots. Mark my word if you are listening to my voice now that APC, when it is about to this first, their first order to expire, they will map out the old naira notes and tell you that. The new Nara notes will be the ones in circulation because they have already hoarded that notes that they will use to buy votes coming 2027. Mark my word, today is June 4th, 2023. It must surely happen coming 2027. God, in his infinite mercy, will keep us alive and you remember my word this day. I My word always comes like a prophet, but I'm not a prophet. But it must surely come to pass. So my wonderful people, please let us do what? Let us hit the ground running and let us go to set to the reason why we are here. Please do not touch the dial. And as and the and the social cultural organization in the southeast had rejected the zoning formula earlier announced by the All Poverty Congress APC for the leadership of the 10th National Assembly. Daily Post record that National Working Committee of the Ruling Party 
had agreed to have the former governor of Aguaibon State, Senator Goswila Pabio, for the position of Senate President, while Honorable Tajuden Abbas from Kaduna State was anointed as the next Speaker of the House of Representatives. The party also anointed Honorable Benjamin Carlo of Abia State for position of Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. With the zoning formula, the party has uh, jettisoned the ambition of some southern, southern eastern uh, senators elect to become the next president of the Senate. Where to make or to correct this impression or to keep the record straight, my dear, the southeasterners don't need uh, either Senate president nor the Speaker of the House. What the southeast need is the freedom and release of Martin Namdekano and Biafran referendum. That is where they stand. According to the news I had by 3 a.m., and what's out of my ear? So make you get that into your this call. But on Wednesday, in a statement issued on Friday by East National Publicity Secretary Chidoze Alexi Ubenaya, described the zoning of deputy speaker to the region as irreflective, disgusting, and provocative. The group urged all lawmakers from the region to vote according to their discretion, irrespective of state, religion, or ethnicity during the election. The state reads. Okay, the statement reads, the Hanesian Depot worldwide has watched with grave concern the zoning of principal officers of the Senate and the House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We have also observed that all Poverty Congress APC zoned the position of the Deputy Speaker to the southeast of Nigeria. The Hanesian Depot states that allocating the position of the Deputy Speaker to the southeast is highly all reflective, disgusting, and provocative to the Igbo nation. To this end, the Hanes and the Igbo worldwide, led by Chief Engineer Dr. Emmanuel Iwanyamu CFR, Aha Ahe Jagamba, directs all the Igbo lawmakers in the 10th National Assembly to vote according to their description, irrespective of state you come from, religion, or ethnicity you belong to. And I hear them, this one is coming from Hanes Nduri. Or oh, and they say, they believe it. <laughs> because now the name now I feed them now. Wait here, what again? What do you want to hear from me? If no, your hands and deep or hands and deep believe it. Waiting again, if, if it's them. And uh, on the same hand, though, we say have the news of our hands and they believe here with us. So may we just continue to the listen all the things they are, uh, uh, they don't, they, all the patanyan from their mouth. On Wednesday, they don't list 13 demands from Tunumbu as he assumes office. Let us listen attentively. On Wednesday, Ndibo has made 13 demands from President Bolame Tunumbu as he assumes office. Recall that Tunumbu was sworn in as president on Monday at the Eagle Square in Abuja. However, on Wednesday, Secretary General Okechukwu okay, Guzoro, yeah, Secretary General Ewen Nayono, the other one. This one, Secretary General again, okay, to see Guzoro, what is really happening? Say, Tunumbu should allow Igbo's benefit from his economic policies. Are you begging? Isi Guzoro also urged the president to ensure the railway line from Port Harcourt to Medugri works. Speaking with Daily Post, Isi Guzoro said, the free market trade and the postulations show that Igbo's are uh, Igbo's who are majorly traders will benefit from his economic policies. What Ndibos expects at this moment is the area of transport. In the area of transport, he should look at the rail lines that go from Patakot to Medugri without security and no security camera. That is the rail you want people to be embarking on. We have to say, you know they safe on the road, you know they safe on the air, you know they safe on the road, all in this same country called Nigeria. Nigeria, on our way down. He should look at the seaports and ensure no economic leakages. Tunumbu should go for well-tested technocrats, not corrupt politicians, and he must ensure that those who will form the next government are not those who put Nigeria into this mess. Tunumbu should not recycle old politicians based on party affiliations. That is what exactly he did already. By naming uh, Abadabia Mila as a chief of uh, his staff, Mm? TOS. Hmm. The government of national unity is an antidote to those challenging his electoral victory in the court. He should go beyond APC and bring in technocrats from PDP, Labour Party, and NNPP. Tunumbu must ensure that 
There is no Islamization agenda in his government. Nigerians are afraid because of the possibility of having a president and vice who are Muslims and probably having a senior president and speaker who might also be Muslims. This is why we are saying Akpabio might likely succeed as the Senate president. We know his track record of achievement as an uncommon governor. Irrespective of all the allegations, Akpabio stands a better chance to balance the Muslim Muslim ticket. Ndibo is interested in the economic aspects of his administration and we will continue to support him like we did when he was governor of Lagos State. He should look into the things that have gone bad in Nigeria and ensure that all the pol uh, political prisoners, including Nam De Kano, are released. Tunumbu should ensure that all his appointments reflect federal character and ensure marriage is the watchword for all his appointments. Tunumbu should know that, uh, that with Ndibu, beside his government, the sky will be his uh, starting limit. Ndibu. Or are you speaking for yourself or for Ndibu? Who call you to speak for us? That is the problem we keep having. When you people are making all these silly statements, you keep on calling Ndibu, Ndibu. Please, mention your name and leave Ndibu alone because Ndibu can never come and speak this. Even Honest Ndibu in general have never uh, congratulated him. They said the matter is still in the court and they wait for the outcome of the court. Fuel subsidy, latest patrol scarcity news, update on subsidy removal for June dead that is yesterday 2023 as nigeria continues to grow on over president tunumbu's announcement on fuel subsidy removal niger news brings you the latest update on petrol scarcity fuel subsidy and the government and citizens reactions fuel subsidy tunumbu reveals plan for minimum wage and on, on what ground i don't know president bola tunumbu ahmed in a meeting held in abuja on friday stated that the enhancement of living conditions for Nigerians is at the forefront of his administration's agenda. The president committed to craft, uh, crafting uh, policies more targeted towards people and affirmed that the national minimum wage requires a review in order to reflect present realities. In his uh, discussion with members of the Progressive uh, uh, Governors Forum, led by the governor of Fimo State, Hope Uzodinjo, Tunumbu suggested that uh, both national and subnational governments need to collaborate, collab uh, collaboratively address the issue of minimum wage, which he said already demands some uh, soul scorching. In a statement provided by the State House Information Director, Abiodun Oladun Joy, the President urged the governors to take advantage of their positions to positively impact their con constituents' lives. He also voiced his commitment to work for the benefit of all Nigerians. Here I am, so now the thing, so the thing take a, so the thing take B. What Nigerians should do instead of demanding retention, uh, retention of first subsidy, Reno Omonkita speaking. Former presidential aide Reno Omonkita has opted or opinion that retention of first subsidy is never the best way to improve the economic standard of Nigeria. Nigeria report that he said he, this comes in the wake of the new fuel price, long queues at the filling stations and scarcity of the same products. According to Reno, if the masses want good infrastructure and a strong Naira, then it should be wrong to support Nigeria's usage of 12 billion dollars from the 40 billion annual income to subsidize fuel. The social political uh, commentator said Nigerians should demand an increase in the minimum wage of workers instead of fair subsidy retention. Of course, that is the gospel truth. He added that if the fair subsidy is not removed, the Naira will keep getting devalu devalued and the country will not move forward. He said, if you want good go uh, roads, schools, hospitals, a national railway, and a strong Naira, you will never support Nigeria using $12 billion from her $40 billion annual income to subsidize fuel or to service debt. Research uh, what cheap fuel has done to oil-rich Venezuela. It ruined the economy and their currency is literally worth less than tissue paper. Venezuela is now the second most miserable nation on earth, according to the Hank World Misery Index. Only Syria is worse. 
Is that uh, what you want for Nigeria? Is that what you want for Nigeria? God forbid. We should be demanding not a retention of fair subsidy, but a living minimum wage for our workers so that their life will make a difference. If we don't end fair subsidy, our Naira will keep getting devalued. That is why Nigeria keeps happening to you. We cannot progress unless we win ourselves from cheap fuel. And that is why every major political party, with the exception of NNPP, campaigned that they will remove fuel subsidy immediately. They were sworn in. So any attempt now to go against President Tunumbu's decision is sore grabs rather than sound politics, according to Reno Omongita. NNPC not constitutionally empowered to fix a petrol price. Femi Falana. The human rights lawyer and senior advocate of the Nigeria, Femi Falana, has condemned the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, for fixing the pump price of petrol. Of petrol. Niger News report that a senior lawyer gave the condemnation days after the NNPCL increase the price of petrol for each state and across each retail outlet across the country. Speaking in an interview with the Chinese television on Friday, Falana said the oil corporation is not legally empowered to fix the price of petrol, stressing the NNPCL is continu uh, constitutionally backed to adjust uh, pump price, to adjust, not to increase. The senior lawyer asserted that the power to fix the price of petrol lies with the present Bola Tunumbu since there is no substantive Minister of Petroleum Resources. He said, the NNPC has metamorphosed into a limited liability company. It is now NNPC Limited. To, to that extent, NNPCs like Total, Exxon Mobil, and Shell operating in oil industry cannot announce increase in the prices of petroleum products. That duty is vested in the government of the day. Nobody has the right in Nigeria to fix prices of petroleum products. Other than the government, you have a price control act and that at that time, the Petroleum Act, now PIA. You ask the NNPC, where have you got the power to fix the price of petrol from 185 Naira to 540? How? The invisible market forces cannot, under the Nigerian constitution and under the PIA fix the price of petroleum products, according to Femi Falana. Under the current situation in which we have found ourselves, since the ministers have not been appointed, the president is running the country, only the president can so decide the price for now. You have the Price Control Act, the PIA, there is no provision in our law for market forces to determine the prices of any product in the country called Nigeria. On the here am so it didn't take B. Fuel subsidy, make gonna hear this one who this uh uh bionoga who provide the ebooks. Anything he said without a uh, mentioning will be my dear that uh, uh tweet or whatever post can never trend. Make gonna hear what he get to say here. Fuel subsidy, Nigerian Labour Congress is acting Labour Party. P to be script bio ononoga. A chieftain of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bayo Nonoga, has urged Nigerians workers to ignore the directive from the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, Joe Ajaero, asking them to go on strike next Wednesday over the removal of fuel subsidy. Onanoga alleged that the Ni Nigerian Labour Congress president was acting the script of the Labour Party in B to destabilize the administration of Bola Ahmed Tunumbu as president. Speaking via a post on his verified Twitter handle on Friday, the APC stalwart wondered the reason Ajero did not suppose or oppose the Labour Party and his presidential candidate P2B, who also promised to remove the poor subsidy. Onano lamented that the NLC presidency was aware of the destabilizing effect of the subsidy was having on the economy, yet was still against his removal. Nobody's against the poor removal law. They are against the hardship our people is passing through. When you want to remove a fair subsidy, make available the necessary means for people not to get uh, too emotional over the announcement or the removal of the subsidy. As simple as that. He made the, the statement uh, the, the so-called president made is awkward. 
is awkward at the beginning of his tenure. On the day of uh, his inauguration, he made such a statement and look at what Nigeria is passing through. Instead of the, even the people that voted for him, all of them uh, passing through the same thing. And that is why I prayed earlier, I said, let uh, Bolame Tunumbu happen to Nigeria so that if the youth will learn, fine and good. if they will not learn, we will keep on wallowing in, uh, in this uh, shenanigans that is happening in the country. He called on the Nigerian people and workers to support the government as it works out new wages and rolls out other interventions he has, as promised by the president to mitigate the fears of new fair price. He wrote, Nigeria Labour Congress President Joe Ajaero has asked workers to go on strike next Wednesday over the removal of fair subsidy despite being privy to the distressing financial figures which justified why subsidy ought to have been scrapped a long time ago. My advice to the prospective workers and the Nigerian uh, populace is simply to ignore Ajaero and his Ike. He is playing politics and uh, is actually acting the script of the opposition Labour Party. How to, to, to do destabilize the young Tunumbu administration? Besides, one wonders whose interest Ajaero is championing when he did not oppose the position of his Labour Party presidential candidates who campaigned with the promise to scrap uh, first subsidy from the one if elected. NLC and TUC leaders knew since last year, November, that subsidy will be scrapped from July 1 as no provision has been made in the budget for it beyond this date. The federal government, which already commits 96% uh, of its revenue in servicing debt, is not in any position to continue selling subsidized fuel, most of which is smuggled across our borders for criminal and uh, obscenely unpatriotic profit. Subsidy of fuel, uh, subsidy of fuel is no longer unsustainable as the federal government is virtually broke. Apart from its 77 uh, trillion naira debt, it also owes NNPC Limited about 2.4 trillion naira for the past subsidies. The Nigerian people and workers should support the government as it works out new wages and rolls out other interventions as promised by President Tunumbu to mitigate the effects of the new uh, fuel price or the new pump price. Let's not make ourselves pounds in the hands of the politically biased and taunted NLC and TUC. Ajaero is no more a Labour leader. He is a politician and leader in the Labour Party. He is no more representing all the Nigerian workers. Is that how you put it? Well, so be it. So my wonderful people, my viewers and subscribers, now here we will take back our kaya and I go with the gozo. Make on enjoy on a Sunday. I'll be right back with another blockbuster. I beg, if you enjoy your Sunday, remember, do not drink while driving and do not drive while drinking. The two opposite ways, it doesn't work well with the public because you might end up finding yourself in a position whereby and I know will be your final answer. So please, let orderliness lead. And uh, please, I want you to also note that this channel needs to be serviced and need to be do what need to be followed. Help this channel to grow. And as you help the channel to grow, that is how the Chukwu Kiabiyama will also help your life and your business to grow. Because watching or listening to my news is a big thing that can happen to you. And also, it's a big thing that can happen to me that you watch, subscribe, and also share any of my content. That's the only thing you can do to support me in this journey. Because without you, there will be no Kute Daily Talk. And without a Kute Daily Talk uh, 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 kind of news, you will not have uh, to hear the simple truth or the gospel truth of what is happening in this country or beyond this country. So, my wonderful people, please, as you are watching, keep on subscribing. As you are subscribing, keep on liking my content every now and then. As you do that, May the Almighty God keep you, and the Greater God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So shall it be. Have a nice day. I'll be right back. Thank you.